um, Red Light Radio accused of falling, of failing, sorry, to uphold community values. So this is maybe similar to what happened with Radar Radio, isn't it, right? All these online radio stations are kind of tumbling down, isn't it? Hopefully we don't hear nothing untoward about NTS, um, because that's that's the only last bastion. I know, again, I, I'm not really a listener of it. I don't really have any time for anyone that plays on there for the most part. Um, could give a shit. I know. I wonder who listens to this sort of stuff anyway. Like, where do they get most of their listeners from? Is it people that work in studios and stuff and just have it playing in the background? I don't know because most of the offices I've worked in, especially even startups, they don't necessarily have a a radio that everyone listens to. No one really, even or even like in the most forward thinking, open plan, flat 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 hierarchy uh, workplaces. No one really wants to hear other people's music. Like everyone just wants to like either speak and chat. Or just do their own thing. No one wants to be like subjected to some people's tunes, right? I don't think so. No one really is like up for it. So I wonder where that stuff is getting played. I'd imagine if you're on a shoot somewhere, you know, just having someone with a good taste in a playlist and stuff will be cool because it keeps everyone's spirits up, right? When you're going into like the late hours of the night. But if you're just sitting in the studio, a bit difficult. But again, if you're on your own, it's one thing. But again, maybe it's London isn't it? or the UK. There's a lot of freelancers here, a lot of people doing many projects. So maybe that's where they get listened from. But I've always wondered who's actually listening to online radio shows. Because most of the time, if I ever if I ever do listen to an NTS mix, it's after the fact. It's been archived it's like a mix show. So that this, so then that, that just turns into something I can find on SoundCloud. I wonder. Anyway, that aside, I hope we don't hear nothing untold about NTS because, you know, Red Light Radio is gone. Or it's going, it's falling by the wayside. I'm assuming, and also Radar Radio ha- obviously suffered the same fate. So this is an article from Xmag. Um, this is the following: Radar Radio has been accused of responding with hostility and gaslighting and silencing in response to criticism offered um, in good faith by Dance with Pride co-founder Axmed Maxmed Ma- Axmed Maxamed. Mad name. Um, Joe Kelly and Joe Kelly, sorry, who held residencies at Red Light Radio. Uh, called the tape escape until September 2019. Okay, so they they raised concerns and said, hey, by the way, you might want to look at those X, Y, and Z people because they're being, um, you know, red light whore. Jesus Christ, who read that? So, um, red light radio co founder Hugo Van Hell, whatever that name is, has been accused of harassing Joe and Axmed at the station's studio in Amsterdam. The co founder, last month, January 19th, Joe wrote on Twitter about her experience, saying that after her final tape escape show, Hugo asked to speak and she requested to talk another time due to her feeling anxious and needing to return to work. In response, she also said Hugo cornered her three times and wouldn't allow her to leave until the conversation took place. The cornering thing is a bit hard, right? Again, I'm not I'm just reading this. I don't know what judgment to make of this, but the cornering thing is a bit difficult. I guess cornering is a little bit like um kidnapping, right? I'd guess as a case. Like if you refuse to let somebody leave, technically that's kidnapping. But when you so someone says cornering, that just means like, hey, I'm trying to talk to you, trying to talk to you and then leave you left and right. So I don't know if that means he was legitimately trying to pin her up against a wall and throw a skirt up over her head. Either way, you know, you're the co-founder of the, of the of the radio store, of the radio station, sorry. Somebody from your platform wants to leave, is feeling anxious and, and uncomfortable. Just step out of the way and let them go home. Do you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Um, so, uh, Joe says the conversation that followed was Hugo telling Joe he's cancelling the tape escape residency and banning Joe from Red Light Studio, citing a public criticism of Joe made of Red Light Red in July about artwork that is disrespectful towards sex workers. What? The fuck? What's this link here? This is the Red Light Radio office. So just just so you have some context of their usual level of respect for sex workers. And by usual, I guess I mean current. Anyway, glad DWP are hosting a takeover today and planting sex workers' is work and support everywhere. So this girl... I don't understand what's going on here. This is so confusing. So I'm assuming this Joe Kelly girl is a sex worker, but also has a show on Red Light Radio. She feels as if they're being the people on there being disrespectful to her because she's a sex worker and assume that she's a whore. Right? I'm assuming is this kind of situation that we're talking about here. So they make this artwork, which is really rude. If that's the case, and that's mid, like insane. And pop it up and say that right. I, I don't know what's going on here. It's just so strange. Um, 
cancelled my show. Though. The on Twitter, Joe wrote that she believes Hugo being unhappy with public criticism is a classic response of a wanting to critique to always be behind closed doors, and that this needs to change along the people policing how people critique instead of responding to the critique. She added that being thinking about how why people react badly defensively. A a lot of criticism comes from anger, disappointment. B lots of people self critique. Their practice is based on constant learning, and C people. Some people have never had to be uncomfortable and they've created spaces for themselves where they safety or feeling what? Axman, who has been involved with two dance with Pride Project take over the Red Light Radio, including Pride, says that she had also raised issues with Red Light Radio, asked them to take more supportive stance on back in the sex workers community, especially due to the studio's location to the Red Light District and its merchandise which profits off the imagery of the area. Axmed said that Hugo responded by saying supporting hashtags such as sex is work. <laughs> were too shouty for Red Light Radio, which is proudly a political station. So it's a polit- so the people on the station want it to be political. He says it's apolitical. If my shit go away. Moira Mona, a Netherlands based professional dominatrix, posted criticism for Red Light Radio, writing that uh, artwork Joe criticizes, stigmatizing. What? The day after Joe shared her experience with Red Light Radio station with Hugo Axman, shared. With Hugo Axmed shared an experience of when which he alleges Hugo harassed him at the station while Axmed was visiting. Axmed said that while at the station Hugo came down and started screaming at him in Dutch that he wanted Axmed to immediately leave the station, saying, I really hate you. Axmed says that he gathered up his belongings. Who is this Axmed dude, man? He sounds, he's, he's going on absolute tear, mate. He's terrorizing everyone. Who is this Axmed guy? Let me see what um who's the co-founder of this place? Uh co-founder. Where is it? Who is this person again? Let me find who's that? Who is this? Hugo yeah, who's this this is Hugo, yeah. Hugo van der Von Boy Hugo whatever his name. Let's see. He's the, this is the co founder. This is the guy that's making all the mess, who's making everyone shake in their boots. This guy with the long hair. Jesus Christ, really? He's the guy that's making everyone get... Look, he's getting his willy touched by some random girl. It's not... It doesn't... Jesus Christ, you wouldn't imagine this is the guy that's making everyone shake, it? Anyway, um, this is making... I'm just confused. This experience with... Who's, who's this person talking in this video here? Hi, everyone. So, as some of you already know through my tweets, um, I wanted to talk about what happened at Red Light Radio. Okay, this is all long, isn't it? It's mad drama. Joan Axman has made statements that makes my detail that the issue is, me- is meeting their public criticism with hostile. So, the main issue here is that they, they feel as if Red Light are not taking their criticism seriously enough. Axman said, and Joe say, first of all, we want to be clear that this situation isn't personal or unique. We've both seen this play out times. So I don't really care about this. Should I, should I just move on? It's a lot to go through, man. I don't know what the. <sighs> Again, it's hard to really make a judgment on this because I don't know the issue. It's loads of kind of stuff that's happening within the Dutch, within the you know Netherlands, or you know within the Amsterdam-based scene. With Red Light Radio, I'm sure there's stuff happening that we're just not privy to here behind the scenes. But I guess for the most part, it just goes to illustrate just how difficult it is to run a business like an online radio show with all these different personalities, all these different people coming from different uh, point of views. Again, dance music is amazing; it's all encompassing, but it also is extremely diverse. Right? There's so many different raves and scenes and people and individuals and point of views and aesthetics and styles that come into one place and to kind of have it all kind of work under one roof of an internet radio show is very very difficult which is probably why some of the better ones are quite stringent about who they select and who they allow to come on their station because once you have one rotten egg once you have one bad apple once you have one um just bad attitude person in the group it really fucks up for everyone so i get i get it i get it but from the outside looking in, it's just very, very messy, man. For all involved, extremely, extremely messy. Like nothing good is gonna come out of this situation if they keep airing out all their public ish, all their dirty laundry is in public. It's not really the best way to go about things. But again, maybe for the ones that are accusing Red Light Radio of their kind of you know insubordination, maybe they kind of feels if there is no other alternative. You know, this is the only their only point of recourse. But you'd hope that they'd have find a solution behind closed doors because this is this could get ugly really really quickly 
And again, it doesn't look like there's a real overstepping of the mark, like maybe on radio. Radio, it just looks like there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lack of uh, appreciation, understanding um, of the issues that the people are bringing to the table, I'd imagine so. But again, it's just, it, it, it sounds like such a headache to run an online radio show. I don't know why anyone would do it. Um, there's little to no reward really for the people running it. Um, just loads of headache. And for the people that are on the show, there is that obviously danger of being in a place with people that you probably wouldn't want to spend time with, right? Because you just come from completely different places. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting situation. Um, again, hope it gets sorted out for everyone involved in the scene because you don't like to see people in this community kind of, you know, beefing like this in public. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do.